Hello, everyone. This is Billy. It's been a long time since I posted any crystal radio video, so this one I made using a Japanese candy can. I bought this one when I was traveling in Japan back in 2019 before the COVID hit. So I've always had this one. I just figured to create a crystal radio out of it. When I'm designing the layout, I want to make sure I keep the cap so I can still use the can to hold candies, medicine, or other things. In this video, I'll show you how to make this one. And at the end of the video, there will be some testing, both indoor and outdoor testing. You'll find that it can deliver a pretty clear radio reception with a telescopic antenna if you are close to a transmitter. Otherwise, you need a long antenna. The first thing we need is to open up the can using this safety can opener. So you can cut away at the four edges and still get the base retained as a cover so you can place it back into the can and to close the end. After cutting, make sure you use sandpaper to sand the edges to remove anything that can hurt your finger. This is the circuit diagram. It's the standard 3DQ resonance circuit. Um, you can have the telescopic antenna connecting to the hot end of the coil or a long antenna. 10 meter, 50 meter, as long as you can find. If you use a long antenna, you can connect at uh, the fifth, uh, at, at the other end of the coil. See the doctor line there. We are using a variable capacitor of 20 to 360 PF. This is a plastic variable capacitor. It's a little bit special. It's manufactured in Japan. If you can't find it, you can use the conventional 270 PF variable capacitor but if you do that you need to increase the number of turns in the coil the coil is on a ferret ring um, it is one using the list wire I'm using 0 0.07 millimeter times 60 list wire that means you have 60 small frets each with the size of 0 0.07 millimeter Flatted together but still insulated. This is very good for high frequency uh, in the AM broadcast range. It will give better Q and much more sensitive sensitivity and selectivity. You wind a total of 60 turns with a tap on the fifth turn. But if you are using a smaller variable capacitor like that of 270 PF then you may need to increase the number of turns to 70 turns or 80 turns and test it out. For the detector you can use this MOSFET called 3DQ. The original model number is 3SK143 uh, batch number Q. You can purchase it from an eBay shop of uh, one of the crystal radio hobbyists in US who got the stock from China. I'll put a link to his eBay shop uh, in the YouTube description area. You can find it there. For the 3DQ, it has four pins. Uh, I use a four pin socket to mount it so I can replace the 40 ones uh, because 3DQ is quite sensitive, it's quite easy to be broken. Uh, so it's better to put it in a socket so you can replace it anytime. On the left and the right, you have the two gate pins G1 and G2. In the middle, you have the uh, drain, the D, and the S, the source. These are all used in the circuit. For the variable capacitor, I'm using this special uh, Japanese made plastic variable capacitor. It has a very big range 20 PF to 360 PF. That couldn't be found in other variable capacitors. 
but if you want to make it, you can still use the 270 PF, conventional variable capacitor. Let's start uh, making the circuit. So we'll connect the blue wire, which is the drain, to the speaker output, and the brown wire, which is gate number one, to the grounding point of the circuit, and also to that of uh, the audio jack for the speaker. The G2, the white color one, will need to connect to our variable capacitor and the hot end of the coil. So before we do all that, let's measure the inductance value of the coil. So it's around 253 micro Henry. So let's do the soldering. First, let's solder the brown wire, which is the gauge one of the 50Q to the, the ground, that's the middle pin of this variable capacitor. Let's tie it to the knob. So let's do the soldering now. Next, we'll solder the gauge two pin from the 3DQ to the hot end of the coil and also a wire to be connected to the antenna terminal. So it's soldered to either side of the variable capacitor uh, because it's a th it has two uh, with, uh, variable capacitor in parallel. So just pick one side of it and just solder it in. I have a Q meter that can also test the range of the variable capacitor and the coil. Uh, the, which forms the resonance circuit. So I'll just connect the two point of the resonance circuit, the cold end of the coil and the hot end of the coil with the variable capacitor connected in parallel. We can now uh, put in the knob and try to turn it from the lower band to the higher band and, and see whether we can cover the full range of the AM broadcast frequency. As you can see, we can uh, tune all the way from around 533 kHz with a Q of 500 all the way to uh, around 2000 something kHz uh, with a Q of around 300. This is sufficient to cover the entire AM broadcasting range, which is from 540 kHz up to around 1645 kHz. Let's test it out before we put everything into the can. Uh, what you're seeing is my recording transformer. There's no battery inside, no amplification, just a step-down transformer to connect to the iPhone. I'm also using this big loop as the antenna, which is hanging uh, at the ceiling of my apartment. My apartment is at the 56th floor of the tall building and is uh, facing a transmission station in an island over the sea, which is around four kilometer away from here. Okay, I've tested successfully. So next is to drill some holes in the can so I can put everything in. Uh, we have three holes drilled for the variable capacitor. The knob we need to pass through there. Uh, it's secured by two very small screws. Next, we need to mount the antenna terminal and the ground terminal. Because the candy can is made of metal, so we need to uh, wrap the screw which are used as the antenna terminal with a layer of tapes to do the insulation. And then I need to drill the hole a little bit bigger and I have to use a paper washer at the top and the bottom to insulate the screw for the antenna terminal from touching the chassis which will become grounded. So it's a little bit of a 
hassle here to make sure we can put the screw inside. We have to mount the ground terminal. Uh, for that one, we don't need to use the washer. We can just mount it directly to the chassis because the chassis will be grounded. Next, we need to install the audio jack. Um, it's a six millimeter hole that I need to uh, press the audio jack through and then uh, there's a, a screw to fasten it in place. The audio jack terminal where it contacts the chassis is also the grounding point. So make sure you don't put um, the signal pin to that grounding point otherwise it will short circuit the audio jack. You just make sure you, you test it before you choose which terminal to connect to the grounding point of the audio jack. Finally, the ferret ring also needs to be insulated because the magnetic material may be too close to the body of the can. So we need to use some foam, very thick foam paper to uh, insulate it to avoid the magnetic soft circuit. And because of use of the metal can, we should pick the ferret ring as thin and as small as possible but uh, for this one I don't have another one so let's see if this one will work so yeah, let me connect my big loop antenna to the ground and antenna terminal of my candy can crystal radio you can hear a lot of interference and noise in my AM broadcast because since uh, two years back a new neighbor moved in and I don't know what type of electrical appliance is using that generate all this noise. I used to be able to receive crystal clear AM broadcast but now no more. A lot of signal noise is being picked up by my antenna. So later on we will test it outdoor which will be much much better I can assure you because there will be no annoying neighbor with their electronic poisoning all the noise and rubbish appliances that they use that give us all these noises next we are going to do the outdoor testing and hope you like my video if you like it please click like subscribe share with your friends and click the bell so I can inform you of the next video Thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of the testing video. Until my next video, goodbye and thanks for watching. Lai 或者是他們的訪問 Moderate to fresh southwesterly winds, occasionally strong offshore. Relative humidity stands at 83%. For the outlook, there will be heavy showers and squally thunderstorms in the next few days. The thunderstorm warning is in force. And that's the weather from Metro Plus, your connect. The Labor Department.
Department will hold the Opening Up a New Terrain online job fair on its interactive in on June 7 and 8. More than 55 employers will offer a wide range of job vacancies, many of them suitable for fresh graduates. All employers will accept online applications. Please visit the Labor Department website at www.jobs.gov.hk or call 2153-3984 for details. Your music, your radio, Metro Plus, your connect. 30 years and beyond. Metro Plus, your connect.